Good morning, lovely people. Welcome back to a very, very cold shed. Oh, yeah, I'm still breathing like a dragon. How are you all? I hope you're well. Um, today we've got a little bit of brightness, so it's lovely to be here. But my goodness, it's cold. Now, quite a few of the jobs I've been planning for January, oh, we'll get in the garden yet, uh, involve me sticking my fork in the soil for various reasons. We've been so wet again in January and now we've had this week of real cold. The ground's frozen so the things I plan to do I'm going to leave them for a while because a I don't want to struggle with frozen ground and b I don't want to I don't want to hurt the soil by mucking around with it while it's frozen so for now, those jobs can wait. There's nothing urgent. I'm thinking about other jobs I can do which are on the top of the ground and which are a bit more physical, keep me warm. So anyway, today I thought it's kind of, I'm sort of slightly carrying on from when I gave you a tour of the shed and talked about the fact that the whole thing, apart from buying the shed, which yes, I accept it was very expensive, it was a lot of money, but everything else was done, for, like, yeah, I mean, I would say 95% of the rest of the shed was done for free. The only expense was things like the curtain wires. I even had the fabric all ready for the curtains. So carrying on with that theme, sort of, I thought I'd just talk a little bit today about frugal gardening. Gardening for pennies, virtually. I know a lot of you out there are, oh, let me just bring you in a bit. I feel like I'm having to shout to you. Yeah, <clears throat> I know there's probably <clears throat> a lot of you out there, <clears throat> sorry, tickled, who like me. You just don't have, you know, excess money to chuck at the garden. And even if you do have excess money, you'd rather, Ooh, oh my goodness, hang on a second. <laughs> Sorry, I was having a little bit of a landslide. Yeah, even if you do have excess money, you don't necessarily want to chuck it at the garden. You want to chuck it at the kids and the grandkids and that sort of thing. So I suppose in a way I'm aiming this video at newer gardeners, perhaps gardeners who are getting their first garden this year. It's something I've said all along, even before I stopped work, even when I was earning, you know, good wage as a nurse. I want to do this garden for as little money as possible. You know, if I spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds doing it, pardon me, it almost defeats the object because I might as well just go to the shops and buy the veg. Obviously the difference is all this veg is organic and the sheer pleasure and joy I get from growing is almost priceless. Now, this isn't me saying do not spend money. Like I said, if you want to, if you've got the money to spend, by all means do, you know, it's your garden. Do what you jolly well want with it within the rules of your allotment association, of course. This is more about, for those of us who don't have the money to spend, can we still produce, you know, an abundant garden? And the answer is yes. I reckon I reckon my garden costs me each year about 150 quid, and that includes my rent. And that will then produce for me nigh on 2,000 pounds worth of food if I had to buy it from the shops. So it's well, well worth it for me. Aside from the fact, like I said, that I just get so much joy from it. Now, last year I did spend an extra 200 pounds on compost. But that's purely because as the years have gone on, my knees have got worse. I'm sure there are loads of you out there who are my age who have beautiful, perfect knees. <laughs> you don't need to buy compost because you've got soil out there. Use the soil you've got. But then if you are like me, <laughs> you're finding that a bit more difficult. You may have to think about um, buying some compost in. So my first top tip for those of you who are skint, like me, is think about the cost of your rent. 
so my rent is about £50 a year. My extras on top, seeds, compost starting, seed starting compost, what have you, it's about another 50. So for me it's about £100 a year if I wasn't buying anything else, so no equipment, bean poles, what have you. Because it's 100 quid a year, every week I put £2 away into a little savings account. And that just means that by the time the next year comes around and it's time for me to buy my seeds and pay my plot rent, I've got that money up front. So rather than having to find a hundred quid all in one go, which let's face it, that's kind of tricky for a lot of us, isn't it? I can find two pounds a week, every week. So yes, maybe start yourself a little savings fund that's purely for your allotment, your seeds, your food growing. So divide, oh, it's really cold today. <coughs> I've got, I've actually, can you see, I've actually got one of your blankets on my knees. So find out how much your rent is going to be for the year. Divide it by your 52 weeks and put that money away. Another thing to inquire about is, uh, are there any uh, reduced rent schemes for your site? So for example, do you get a reduction if you're um, over 65? I think it's over 65 on my plot. Is it over 70? Over... Anyway, check on your site. There may be a reduction if you're over 65. There may be a reduction if you're on wage and on benefits. There may be a reduction if, like me, you're not on benefits and you're not old or that age. Yeah, because most places they want to see, uh, oh, I'm just having a beautiful goldfinch out there. Sorry, distracted. A lot of sites, if you're on benefits, you'll, you'll be able to show them your benefit letter and you'll get a reduction for that. I was in that position, but my council have a scheme where those who are on a low income, um, we apply for a certain card and we can show that to get reductions on things rather than having to prove we're on benefits. Because actually, there's a lot of people out there working, uh, like me, who are, who are kind of on a similar income to those on benefits. So do check that out and see if you can get a reduction. Now, aside from your rent and your seeds, and the thing with the seeds, just to say as well, this is another really important frugal tip, if you're just starting, it won't it won't be the case for you now, but certainly in a year's time. Think about saving your own seeds. A lot of seeds are really easy to save. If you think about the kind of vegetables that have got pips in them, so tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers. If you think about beans and those beans in the pod, those pips in the pod, Think about it now and plan for it so that as we get into August, September and October of this year, you earmark some of your plants specifically for seed saving and then you will never have to buy those seeds again. So yes, this time round you will have an outlay for your seeds, but in another year you'll have saved loads of your own and save a little bit more than you need so that you could maybe do swapsies with other people. Um, look on Facebook, there are various, like in my area we've got a couple of local area Facebook groups, sometimes people are getting rid of seeds there, you could offer yours as a swap, there are ways to get seeds for no money, <laughs> partly, oh it is cold, hang on a second, oh, I need to have one of those, um, yes partly from your own saved seed and also partly from swapping. Facebook, Free Cycle, Craigslist, I think it's called in the States. These are great places to look for equipment, whether it's tools, compost bins, water butts. Before you buy anything, sign yourself up to these kind of lists and keep the lookout. And don't be in a hurry. This I think this is a really important thing. Don't be in a hurry to go out and buy masses and masses and masses of kit, spending hundreds of pounds. A because the chances are you'll be able to find it for free or cheap 
later on. And B, you may not like this gardening lark. I can't see why you wouldn't. It may be that it's not because you don't like it, but you find that you just can't make enough time for it. You know, people are working, people have got family commitments, family cares, elderly relatives, kids, grandkids, whatever it is, you know, we're all fantastically busy. So with all the best will in the world, you may get your allotment this year and just decide, I can't commit to it. So don't be in a hurry to buy a load of kit up front. Yeah, keep your eye on free cycle, make a little list, make a mental list or an actual list of things you think you'd like to have, things you think you might need. Things like the compost bins, both of my compost bins were free. If you can't find a compost bin straight away, things like pallets are often being given away free. You know, whack four pallets together, line it with some cardboard. There you go, that's the beginnings of your very first compost heap. Brilliant. Uh, I made a little list because I don't want to forget things. So yes, free cycle, Craigslist, skips. Look in skips. <laughs> I think every allotment here is also a part-time skip diver. Remember I was mentioning about so much of the shed, all the fit out from the shed came from skips and scraps and rubbish. Knock it all together. By the time it's had a coat of paint, you wouldn't know it was all mismatched rubbish, would you? Yay, well, you would, but who's looking? Um, did a compost saving? Ah, oh, yes, this is a big one. Tools. Tools are expensive. Decent tools are expensive. Don't be tempted to go down the route of the false economy of buying cheap tools. Uh, cheap tools are cheap for a reason they're rubbish. They'll probably break before the year is out, bend, snap, whatever it is. I am going to talk more about tools and the essential toolkit uh, in videos later on, but for now I would say to start with really there are two things you want. A fork, a long handled fork, and a trowel like my little hori hori knife. If you're going to be gardening communally, as on at an allotment site, um, check with the secretary or, you know, someone from the committee, whoever's in charge, check with them to see if they've got a tool loan scheme. Do they have some communal tools that you can borrow? Especially back to this thing of finding out if you're gonna actually like the allotment life or have time for it. So I know that, for, for example, on my site, we have lots of spare communal tools. Quite often, uh, you know, someone will buy an upgrade of their own tool, so they'll donate their old tool to the community pile, as it were. Sometimes when people leave, for whatever reason, they'll say, you know, keep all my tools. So actually, for anyone starting on my site, they don't need to have, they don't need to buy anything up front. We've got all the tools you could possibly need to borrow. Over time, if you discover, gosh, I absolutely love this. This is the best live. Why didn't I do it sooner? Why didn't I get onto the top of the waiting list sooner? If you find out that you really love it, then yes, you might want to think about investing your own, investing in your own tools maybe maybe every time you come to the lot especially if you can only come at the weekend if you're working Monday to Friday and every time you come down someone else has borrowed the spade and you really need it yes think about investing in your own and you could maybe if you're doing your pound a week saving for your rent and pound a week saving for your seeds maybe another one or two pounds a week for your tool fund it's the sort of thing where once you get the bug, you'll be telling all your friends and family how much you love this gardening lark. And they'll be thinking, oh, brilliant, I know what to get them for Christmas in that case. So if you have the kind of family and friends who ask you rather than just present you, have a little bit of a research, go to shops and try the tools out in terms of, say, for length. Because I'm quite tall, I like a slightly longer handle <clears throat> on my tools. 
that is something you can only really find out by going to the shop and testing them out. Um, you could come up with your dream, your wish list of all the possible tools you want. Go try them out, find out what makes they are. And then if your family or friends do ask you if there's something you'd particularly like for your birthday or Christmas, you could say, ah, oh, yes, the, like mine is, I think, Spear and Jackson Fork, the extra long one would be marvellous, thank you. <laughs> But yeah, do check to see if your um, if your allotment society has um, spare tools that you can borrow just while you get started. And if you really can't, if you really can't borrow uh, tools, it it will depend on what the state of the allotment is that you're taking on. But like I said, probably a long handled fork and a trowel pretty much get you going to start with and the other thing is things like um strimmers what do you call it in america weed whackers that sort of thing uh, think about hiring one for the weekend if you're having to cut down a lot of brambles and all sorts maybe just hire one for the weekend see how you get on with it do your clearing work <clears throat> just to get started and then later on you can think about you know, either buying your own or maybe hiring one again weeks and weeks and weeks further down the line. Um, it's the time of year when we're going to be starting to sow seeds. Things like seed trays, the cells, all our pots that we start things in, that can add up as well. So anyone who's been watching my channel for a while will know how much I love my paper pot maker. These are about £10. You can get them cheaper, but they're not forestry commission stamped. Anyway, you can get them in various sizes. I've had mine for years. You can tell by how grubby it is. I grab free newspapers from either outside estate agents, train stations, what have you. So I don't even pay for the newspapers. Make dozens and dozens and dozens, over the years, probably hundreds and hundreds of paper pots for oh, I mean, so, how long have I had this I've had this probably about five years so it's cost me two quid a year so far and from this I've made oh I mean I can't even begin to think how much it would have cost me to buy all the pots I've made with it loo roll holders the inners of loo rolls great for starting seeds in Yogurt pots, if you're the kind of family, if, you, if you're if you eating yogurts, oh, any any plastic pots, cottage cheese pots, the bottoms of milk bottles, start saving all that stuff. Instead of putting it into the recycling bin, wash it out, save it, poke holes in the bottom for drainage. There you've got myriad options for pots for starting your seeds in. What you'll find, I hope you'll find anyway, as you as you get into your gardening life is most things that you look at in your life, you're going to look at them twice and think, hmm, how am I going to use that in the garden? <laughs> Becomes addictive. Um, oh, one of the great freebies that um, I'm always advocating is urine as fertilizer. So your own wee mixed with some water one part of wheat to 10, 15 parts of water is a great general purpose fertiliser. So no need to spend money on... I mean, you see them in garden centres, don't you? These great walls full of feed for this and feed for that and feed for the other and this kind of da-da-da. We in a bucket and add it to some water. It's all I, ah, oh, no, it's not all I use because I do use the chicken pellets now. I have done for the last two years because I was gifted a big bag of them. But before then, I've never used any kind of commercially bought fertiliser. Just use my own wheat and I get, you know, I get great harvests. So, yeah, there's always w ways to think differently so that we're not spending have I covered everything I wanted to cover? I think so. I think the point is this. Um, it's so exciting. It's so exciting to garden. It's so exciting when you get your first garden. 
it's exciting even eight nine years down the line <laughs> this time of year it's just like that rush of oh i can't wait i can't wait to make a garden again this year the possibilities are endless the imagination of of how amazing the garden could be in august it really is a wonderful wonderful time of year with that excitement <laughs> can come that thing of going mad spending and all i'm trying to say is yes yeah, spend if you want to but you don't you don't have to spend a fortune to get masses and masses of veggies out of your garden you really can do it for pennies you know even if you were doing three quid a week saving for rent seeds tools the whole lot what's three quid a week a quick 50p it's less than less than 50p a day less than 50p a day for all your vegetables for a year it is doable right it is now officially blooming cold <laughs> really 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 cold what's the time yeah i think oh, i'm just looking at my clock i think it's time for me to say cheerio to you all i need to get outside run around doing something really really physical to warm myself back up but not anything to do with the soil today it's frozen i'm gonna leave it alone there are other things to do i think i'm gonna find things to do at home instead because it really is quite chilly Hmm. I think one of the things I could do with doing today is trying to find, I can't remember where I've stashed them, but I've got a full set of thermals from my nursing days when I used to stand at the bus stop at 5.30 in the morning in winter in the freezing cold, in the dark. Yeah, where have I put my thermals? They're there somewhere. That's what I'm going to do. Go home to find my thermals. All right, lovelies, it's cheerio from a chilly Vivi. I'll see you all again soon. And hopefully, I do hope, I know I keep saying it, it will happen, but hopefully soon we'll get out there and do something. Not today. Take care of yourselves, lovelies. Dream big, spend small. See you again really soon, I hope. Bye for now. <laughs>